Well, hello, welcome to Glasgow Rangers Nation. This is the update. This is me. This is Owen James, your host, bringing you all the latest goings on at the club as we are proceeding into and hopefully through what is going to be an exceptionally busy summer of signings, rebuild, and revolution at the club. Now, we've obviously already got two signings through the door. I suppose one and kind of one stayed behind the door. In terms of Hefte, obviously signed, and Oscar Cortez. Uh, Liam Kelly is well expected to be the next name on the list of signings. Uh, the free agent goalkeeper from Motherwell, which we discussed, obviously, on yesterday's programme. Thank you for the phenomenal response to that video. Well, we're going to look at a couple of players today who have been linked with a move to the club. Uh, one who is a player who was looked at in January, uh, nothing happened, but now his circumstances have massively changed um, and changed to the benefit of Rangers, in my opinion. And another one is a link that's come from Germany um, as well. A guy with a very difficult name to pronounce, but I'll do my best to massacre it in my true excellent form. And let's talk about a name from the past, a name that was linked back in January, a midfielder that uh, that we've heard of before, and that is Stephen Alzate um, of Brighton. Now, he is now a free agent. Um, he having been, his contract ended by Brighton. So he is now at, at, now free to talk to other clubs and sign for who he wants. So the fee, transfer fee, obviously, is not an issue there now. It will be purely a signing on fee and agreeing wages. Now, Alzate was someone that Rangers looked at in January and identified as a possible future Rangers player. So what do we know about Alzate and what has he been up to since we last talked about him? Well, Stephen Alzate, that is his name. I think that's how you pronounce the lad's last name. Uh, he is 25 years old, so still, you know, has a capacity to improve there and capacity to, you know, be, you know perhaps flip for a few, you know, a few extra million pounds in the future. He was born in London, in Camden, but has Colombian and English citizenship. So obviously it would fit in well with our Colombian Oscar Cortez. He's a midfielder, a central midfielder by trade. He's right-footed. Um, he was with uh, Standard Liège. He is still with Standard Liège on loan uh, when his contract expires uh, on the June the 30th. He's on loan from Brighton and Brighton have already announced that he will be leaving them at the end of that loan period. Um, he's played uh, a number of games in the central midfield. He's also played as an attacking midfielder but can also play as a defensive midfielder. A player with a decent range of passing, a player you know who can link attack and defence, a player who has you know had a wide and varied career. Now he spent a couple of seasons on loan at Standard the Asian Belgium so played in a in a different league, a league perhaps a little bit more similar to Scotland, also made appearances for Brighton. Brighton's in the 21 team after having started his career at Leighton Orient and Swindon. Well, uh, with Standard Liège, he made 54 appearances, scoring five goals and nine assists. That's what, 14 goal contributions in his 54 appearances. Uh, with Brighton, he made 50. One appearances, scoring three goals and two assists. Uh, Brighton's and 21s, 28 appearances, three goals, one assist. Swindon, 26, three and four, 12, one and two. So, you know, you can see the type of player he is more. I don't think, you know, he's not really a goal scorer. He's more sort of the midfielder who will, you know, destroy, create, uh, you know, play to others who can therefore go on and create. Now, he will leave Brighton at the end of the season. Um, he joined Brighton in 2017 um, and made those appearances for them. Uh, but he spent, like I said, the last two seasons on loan at Standard Liège in Belgium. Uh, technical director Davy Weir, yes, remember him, Rangers' very own legend Davy Weir, uh, paid tribute to Alzate as he wished him all the best. He said, we would like to thank Stephen for his efforts during his time with the club and wish him the very best for the future. Uh, you know, as yet, no indication of where he is going to end up. But, you know, the fact that Rangers did obviously, you know, see him as a uh, as a possible player back in January, could well lead Rangers to go back in for this player now with the way it cleared. Uh, like said, all the money, therefore, that can be sort of designated towards signing on fees, wages, and securing him as a Rangers player rather than having to pay off a transfer fee. Um, as our turner is someone, obviously, that uh, Clement clearly rated back in January. Uh, Niels Coppen also identified this player. Uh, so this could be well be a player that we look at again uh, and obviously bring in 
in this summer window. You know, midfield is an area we do need to strengthen. Uh, obviously, with the departures of the likes of John Lundstrom, uh, Ryan Jack, for example, you know, players to play in that midfield pivot too. Al Zate could certainly do that. So interesting times for Rangers and Stephen Alzate to keep your eyes open for that one. Now, another player that Rangers are allegedly interested in, according to reports in a number of media sources and on some of the Rangers pods as well, is this player here, Yusuf Kabadai. I think you say his name, Kabadai, Kabadai. I don't know. I'm probably pronouncing his name hideously wrong. You know what I'm like for slaughtering names. He is a Bayern Munich prospect. Um, as we know, Bayern Munich are famous for buying up youth prospects in Germany um, from obviously the, uh, you know, from the Turkish community, for example, and also from the native German community as well. And, you know, developing these, you know, Bayern is certainly a centre of excellence for young players. And then those young players don't always necessarily go on to play for Bayern. They can be, you know, sold or sent on loan all across the Bundesliga or the or Bundesliga too. Now, in terms of Kabadai, he spent the season on loan in Gelsenkirchen, uh, where England actually play their first game against Serbia. He uh, has played for Schalke 04 um, in Germany and really impressed during his time there. In fact, impressed so much that Schalke wanted to exercise the option to buy uh, for uh, Yusef Kabadai. However, the deal that uh, Bayern were asking for was too expensive for the uh, Schalke, who are a team who have got financial issues and also currently reside in Bundesliga 2. They're certainly not the Schalke of the past that you may remember with some uh, players like, for instance, Klaas Jan Huntelaar, who played there. Well, what do we know about Yusef Kabadai before we talk a little bit more about him? Well, this is what we know about him for a fact and a start. He is 20 years old. He was born in Munich, um, but of Turkish descent. He has German and Turkish nationality. Turkish citizenship. He has represented both Turkey and Germany at underage level. Um, has yet obviously not played any full international football for either of the teams. So in theory, is eligible for both Turkey and Germany going forward. He is a left winger by trade, although can play right wing, attacking midfield, and as a second striker as well. He's right footed. Um, you know, like I say, he's currently on loan to Schalke 04. He's on loan there till June, the end of June, uh, with the option to buy. But like I said, he is, um, you know, that option to, to buy is unlikely to be taken up given the difference in prices for uh, the player. Now, in terms of his records this season, um, Yusuf Abadai has made the following appearances and scored the following number of goals. He's played 23 times for Schalke in the Bundes, second Bundesliga, uh, scoring four goals, averaging a goal every 287 minutes and playing over a 1,000 minutes for Schalke. He made one appearance in the DFB Pokal, which is their, their cup competition, and also played in the region in the yeah, Vest, uh, scoring uh, got one goal in two appearances, meaning that this season he's made 26 appearances, scored five goals, um, averaging a goal every 262 minutes. Uh, Kabadai is a very exciting young prospect, someone who is, you know, is rated at Bayern, uh, but someone obviously that they can't guarantee first team football with. He's playing essentially for their second 11 at this moment in time. Um, he was handed his professional contract by Bayern last summer uh, before he went on loan to Schalke. And like I said, has really impressed during his time there as a quick, fast, tricky winger. Um, according to reports coming out of Germany, it's not just Rangers who are showing an interest in the player. Also, Sam Pauli, who are a German team, and Lecce of Italy as well. Now, he is under contract to Bayern until 2025. Uh, however, apparently all possibilities are on the table when it comes to Kabadai. Uh, the report said, and I quote, everything is possible. So by everything that is possible, uh, that means direct sale, loan, loan with an option to buy, uh, or even a new contract with Bayern Munich have all been discussed for Kabadai. So you look, What's the likelihood of a permanent transfer between Bayern and Rangers for this player? I would say probably a little unrealistic if, if we're being wholly honest on this one. Um, in terms of Yusuf Kabadai and, and his market value, 
as a player. Um, you know, that's something that would, you know, has to be taken into consideration if you were thinking of making a bid for him. Now, his, his market value is around about a million pounds at this moment in time, which is, you know, achievable by Rangers. But could it be that, you know, Rangers may want to, you know, perhaps run the rule over the player and take him with a loan with an option to buy, which, of course, when it comes to Bayern Munich, of course, causes a little bit of fear because of the Malik Tillman situation where we had Tillman here on loan with an option to buy. We impressed, seemingly wanted to buy Tillman. However, Bayern pulled out. Tillman pulled out and it all fell apart. So could that be a fear that if we go down the same route with Kabadai, that he is another player that perhaps, you know, in 12 months time will want to do something else, go somewhere else. He'd like Tillman who has now joined PSV Eindhoven. But it certainly seems that Rangers this summer will not only be looking for permanent transfers, but will also be looking at the, the loan market. You know, in terms of the budget, I very much doubt the budget is huge. I'm not you know, thinking that Rangers are going to be splashing 25, 30, 35 million pounds on players. I just don't think we have that much money to spend. However, so we have to be clever. We have to use the Bosman market. We have to use the loan market, as well as obviously securing players on a permanent basis. This squad, I think, next season will be a mixture of young players, of existing players, of new purchases and of loan players as well. I think that will be what the Rangers are looking for. And certainly, you know, the Cortez deal, loan with an obligation to buy, the Diamande, loan with an obligation to buy. It could be that, you know, we go down that route with Kabbalah as well. You know, very much depend on the tax take on players. You know, he still got to develop. He still, he still has weaknesses. I, you know, I'm not an expert on him. I'm not an in the know person on, on Kabadai. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, he is someone who can be developed, who can be improved, who can be made better. So he's certainly someone we, you know, should be looking at. We, you know, we are clearly from what we've read and what we've heard coming out of the club, scouring the whole of Europe for players, the uh, whole of South America for players, the whole of. Asia, the whole of all across the world for players. We are, you know, throwing the net wide and that's the way we need to be going forward. We can't just limit ourselves to one market. So these are two players that, you know, the latest two links is in, a, in a summer probably of a thousand links. Uh, some spurious, some have truth in them, some have zero truth in them, you know, who knows. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think of these two players and the possibility to join the club. Obviously, if you want to keep all over the latest news coming out of the club, the best way to do it is to, of course, subscribe to the channel, Glasgow Rangers Nation. Thank you so much for watching, guys. It is phenomenal talking to you, as always. And on the way out, two things. Two things. Number one, smash the like. And number two, number always.